Grade 7 math, number 2.2b, dividing integers, word problems. If you remember from the last video, we found out that the rules for dividing integers is the same as multiplying integers. If we have like signs, the answer, the quotient, is going to be positive. And if we have unlike signs, the answer, the quotient, is going to be negative. So here's our word problem. Tala bought a bus pass for $30, and every time she rides the bus, the $1.50 bus fare is deducted from the available balance on the pass. So how many times will Tala be able to ride the bus? So think, she paid $30. Each bus ride is negative $1.50 from the pass. So we're going to have to do 30 divided by negative 150. So in order to do this, the $30 is 30.00 for $30, and the $1.50 is 1.50 we need to move the decimal place over to behind the zero in the dollar fifty to do this division problem, which means we need to move it over two times in the thirty dollars also. So now we have one fifty going into three thousand. Well, a dollar fifty and a dollar fifty makes three dollars, so I know it went in there two times. Two times one fifty is three hundred. So I did that and I subtracted it and I got zero. It was the other zero's turn to come down. How many times can 150 fit into zero? Zero. So I know that she can ride 20 times on the bus. And because they were unlike signs, she can take 20 rides from the pass. So it's going to be negative 20, see? Because she's taking 20 rides from the pass. All right. Emma bought a used car for $5,000 from her neighbor. She agreed to pay the neighbor $200 each month until the debt was paid in full. So how many months will Emma have to make the payment? So we think she owes her neighbor $5,000. So that's a negative. She's in debt $5,000. And she pays $200 each month. So that's a negative out of her account. Okay. So we do negative 5,000 divided by negative 200. And we do our long division. How many times can 200 go into 5? It can't. Into 50? It can't. Into 500? Ooh, it can. And how many times? Well, 2 times 200 is 400, so we can do that. We put the 2 above the 0 and the 500 in the 1 spot for the 500. And we multiply 200 times 2 and get 400. And we do our subtraction and get 100. And now it's this zero's turn to come down. And we ask ourselves, how many times can 200 go into 1,000? Well, 200 times 5 is 1,000. So we put our 5 up here, and we do our subtraction, get a remainder of 0. And we know that she has to do it for 25 months. And these are both negative, so we have a positive for an answer because we have like signs. See? Now this one's going to be a little more challenging, okay? A little higher order thinking. So try to stick with me, okay? Lisa divided an integer, x, it's going to take the place of the integer, by a negative 4 and got 10. Then she divided the 10 by integer, y, that's going to take the place of that integer, and she got a negative 2. So find the quotient of integer x and y. So we need to divide x by y. How do we find this? All right, so take a breath and think. Multiplication is the inverse of division. So if she divided x by negative 4 and got 10, we can multiply negative 4 and 10 to get x because it's the inverse. Negative 4 times 10 is negative 40. Now we know that x is negative 40. Now it says she divided 10 by integer y and got a negative 2. Well, we can divide 10 by the negative 2 and find y. Think about this. If it said 6 divided by y equals 3, well, we know that 6 divided by 2 equals 3. We know that we can switch these around. 6 divided by 3 is going to equal 2. So that would be the y, see? So if we're doing 10 divided by negative 2, we're going to get a negative 5 because they're, they're unlike signs. We know that it would have been 10 divided by negative 5 as the integer y. See? Because we divided it by the 2 instead and got that as the quotient. We flipped it around. So now we know that y is negative 5. Well, we still need to find that quotient. We need to have x divided by y. Well, if x is negative 40 and y is negative 5, we divide negative 40 by negative 5. And 5 goes into 40 8 times. They're both like signs. Our answer is a positive 8. See, we did it. It wasn't that big of a deal.
So if you come across a problem like this, just remember the inverse operation of division is multiplication and vice versa. And remember that when you're dividing numbers, that you can plug the quotient in the place of the variable and find the answer, right? Okay, so multiplying or dividing integers, you find the absolute values. You solve the equation for those absolute values. Then you determine the sign by the signs in the equation. If they're like signs, it's going to be positive. If they're unlike, they're going to be negative. You write the answer with the correct sign, okay? If you're still having problems, I advise you to go to my Joanne School Grade 6 math playlist and look up videos 9.6 and 9.6b for multiplying uh, integers that are positive and negative and 9.8 for the division of integers, okay? That might help you. I might say things in a little bit different way so that you can understand it, okay? Doesn't hurt. And maybe you can even check out some other people's videos and see what they say, all right? So, I hope to see you next video, and I hope this was helpful, and we'll move on to our next topic. Bye.